Here's another book for my grandkids called Matilda Brown. One day not very long ago, beside a quiet town, there was a woman rather large, her name Matilda Brown. Her home was just a cottage, crooked, chipped, and bent, with a porch made of cedar wood, worn, gray, and spent. She baked every Monday a few brown loaves of bread, a white cake that she'd give to bless someone, she said, a pie for her dessert after dinners for the week, a turkey that she'd share with someone new that she would seek. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said, my debt was paid so very long ago. On Tuesdays, she'd sit and sketch with a pencil on her chair. As she rocked, her mind would wander and mentally prepare. For this day, she compiled a list of the ones that she would bless from the postman, her pastor, neighbor, or a stranger was best. Then the evening was for writing cards just to make one smile. She would decorate them with antique lace and put them in a pile. One by one she blessed them with a prayer for those who'd soon receive a little piece of heaven to help them to believe. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said, my debt was paid so very long ago. For on Wednesdays she'd travel with a cane in one hand and her bag filled with trinkets she'd wrapped with a band. Some cards of thanksgiving, a sandwich or two, homemade angels of popsicle sticks held with glue. Some leftover cookies on plates wrapped in foil, white cake now frosted, and six colored eggs hard boiled. Distributing treasures on Wednesdays, she'd say, was where I was most blessed when I gave away. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said, my debt was paid so very long ago. Thursdays, you'd think she'd be tired of her tolls, but the woman woke early to gather some bowls. She filled them half full with some cream mix, some milk mixed with cream. Then she put on her apron that was stained at the seam. Now carefully placing the bowls on a tray, she paused, bowed her head, and thankfully prayed. With both wrinkled hands and a shake in her step, she carried those meals made for strays with some pep. She kicked the screen door open, crossed the porch, down the stairs, past the path to the shed where she once kept the mares. Set, she set each separate bowl with precision and love for a hungry young kitten she was sent from above. She coaxed them with breakfast each Thursday, they'd say, in hopes to save one from the fate of a stray. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said, my debt was paid so very long ago. Fridays, she would walk the 12 blocks into town where the animal shelter took her rescued on down by the bus to the metro where people would pay for the kitties and puppies they'd bring there that day. 
In a way, she was savior to that gentle lot, who knew little of their dangers nor of her protective plot. It was said that Fridays were her favorite day, for it reminded her of just what her savior had paid. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said, my debt was paid so very long ago. Saturdays were days of rest for many in the town, but as you'd guess, our kind old friend didn't let that get her down. She woke at dawn to hit the market before the sun was hot and picked the freshest vegetables to boil in a pot. At home she'd add the chicken, carrots, beans, and rice. Then while she baked some buns it cooked and she'd add her secret spice. Was she inviting special guests, some people in the know? No, there were others in her mind and she was sure they'd show. When all was done, she mustered up a will too strong to ignore and lugged that giant pot of soup across the kitchen floor. She kicked the screen door open, crossed the porch down the stairs, past the path to the shed where she once kept the mares. She placed the pot of blessings on a stump just perfect height, then begged to call the passers-by to come taste her delight. She fed the children down the block whose daddy had no work. She fed the couple on their walk, though it was just a perk. She fed a little puppy, a man from out of town, and others that had need came, for word had spread around. Some took as if expected, some thanked her with a smile. Some needed it so badly. Others stayed to talk a while. She looked not for a thank you as her blessings she'd bestow. She just said my debt was paid so very long ago. Sunday was a day of rest after church was done. There she attended Bible school and learned about such fun. She smiled as new ideas would pop into her head. She learned of how to be a blessing from the master as she read. When others talked about her as they'd chat about the town, I heard a young girl say once, I want to be like Matilda Brown. <laughs> if Mrs. Brown could hear, she'd smile and tell her, Lassie, as you grow, just remember that your debt was paid so very long ago. <laughs>